BMW is known for making some of the best inline six engines in the business, whether it's the classic M30, the trusty N52, or the beastly S55. With the latest in the lineup, however, they might have outdone themselves yet again. The B58 powers a slew of famously fast vehicles, including the A90 Supra, G42 M240i, and G21 M340i, and needing staggeringly few modifications to blow past factory power figures like an unsuspecting AMG owner. God, this thing, it's pretty crazy. From the last time I drove it stock, this is... Oh my goodness, this is just ridiculous! Today, we're breaking down the history, design, and tuning potential of the BMW B58. Part of the reason the B58 is such a huge hit is its predecessor, the N55. Although it was a huge improvement over the N54, one of the more infamously unreliable engines BMW ever made, oil leaks, carbon buildup, and high-pressure fuel pump issues still plagued the otherwise well-loved N55. For its successor, BMW took what worked, like the twin-scroll single turbo and double Vanos, and kept advancing their straight-six platform. Now pushing more boost, higher compression, and with reliability upgrades like forged internals and a closed deck block, the first generation B58, dubbed the B30M0, hit the scene in 2015, making 322 to 355 horsepower and 332 to 369 pound-feet of torque in various 40i platforms at the time. In 2018, the B58 received several important changes and a bump in power for its first technical update. BMW split the cooling system into separate sections for the cylinder head and block, integrated the exhaust manifold into the head, swapped to a single part timing chain, and used a new high pressure fuel pump generating over 5,000 psi. The B58B30M1, or just B58TU1, also got a high performance cousin, suffixed O1 instead of M1. The B5801 was the first gloves-off moment for BMW with this engine, making 382 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque under the hood of the G29 generation Z4M40i, which rockets to 60 in a hair under 4 seconds. In 2022, the changes were arguably more significant than the previous technical update. Aside from the already noteworthy improvement of supplementing the direct injection fuel system with port injectors, which cleaned up the emissions and the valves at the same time, the B58TU2 switched its entire combustion cycle, now using the Miller cycle for increased efficiency and reduced knock. Without getting into the thermodynamic weeds of it all, the Miller cycle of combustion initiates the compression stroke with the intake valves partially open, decreasing the amount of compression the cylinder has to fight to get to top dead center, thus making for a more efficient combustion cycle. The B58B30M2 was also more powerful than the M0 and M1 engines before it, now making 375 horsepower and 384 pound-feet of torque. Of course, the B58 family's power doesn't stop there. The flat-out variants of engines from BMW have always carried the coveted S prefix, and when the S58 debuted in 2019, there was a lot of coveting going on. <laughs> Dialing down the compression ratio to 9.3 to 1, the S58 was able to add another turbo and increase boost to around 25 psi. The result? A staggering 503 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque in the G82 M4 Comp, numbers unimaginable from a factory 6-cylinder even just 5 or 10 years ago. However, as shown by countless dyno videos, a few simple mods like a less restrictive downpipe for the turbo and a freer flowing intake in combination with a tune bring even a regular 340i into the upper 400 horsepower territory. I really tried to find specific numbers for this video like I did with the M276, but it seems like the details are really down to your specific configuration and your specific tuner. Still, I feel more than comfortable saying that 400 horsepower is an achievable goal with really not a lot of work. Speaking of work, what kind of work do you need to do to keep one of these on the road? According to most owners, not much actually. Although valve cover gaskets and coolant leaks are particularly common, things like turbo failures or accelerated engine wear don't make it onto any common problems lists. And the 2022 edition of port fuel injection means that the engine cleans the carbon off its own valves, unlike direct injection only counterparts. I did notice that the PCV valve is rather fault prone, dumping excess oil into the intake when it fails, resulting in an unexpected smokescreen. 
My guess would be that in a high heat, precise tolerance application like this, a lot of the rubber and plastic components will age pretty hard, as evidenced by the valve cover gasket's fragility. Oh look, I didn't break it! Woo! That's a Okay. <laughs> but, overall, the B58 is much more reliable than not, and there are plenty of owners with no problems at all. And there we have the BMW B58. Whether you need a silky smooth torque factory for your palatial X7 or a snarling snapping beast for your Supra, the B58 does it all. With just how many of these engines have been produced, and how many different platforms they're in, it'll be interesting to see what other developments get made in the B58 tuning field in the coming years. And if we manage to get a B58 TU3, I wonder if it'll clear 400 horse from the factory. If you own a B58 powered car and have anything to add, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for sticking with me. See you next time!